Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to use the color wheel to help us choose colors that give a lot of pow and wow to your project. But first, let's talk about inspiration. Today I was inspired by a quote. I found the quote, if one door closes and another door opens, chances are your house is haunted. It made me laugh, so I wanted to do a page. So I went to supercoloring.com and got a free printable of a haunted house and the page is gone. So today I'm going to be working in my accidental art journal. And now this is where I put leftover paint, tissue paper, collage papers, and the like. And sometimes they turn into lovely pages right before your eyes without seemingly any effort. Some great backgrounds that I can then just do a quick, easy art journal page on. And sometimes they're a little less interesting or successful so they have more layers. Here was a complete fail. Actually I was attempting or trying experimenting something. There's some texture paste on here but you know what? I'm loving the background color of this that's inspiring me to go to use that color and I can put my printable right on top of it so it's kind of gone. So reclaim a page. Now I'm going to pretty much cover it up, but if that's not the case, just put a coat of gesso and be done with it. Just knock it back and put more color in there, texture, whatever it is. Once you put your other things on top, it's just going to be texture. So speaking about the color wheel, now we are in the blue green section just to the left of the top. We've got some greens and some blues and I'm, I basically I'm getting those colors by mixing Prussian blue with Naples yellow and that gives you that green color. I want this to be the background for my haunted house. I'm kind of going for a night sky. I'm mixing it wet and wet but I'm trying not to get it too mixed up. I want to see some variation and color on the page. So once I have that, I'm going to set that aside and let that dry and I'm going to start working on the focal image. Now I'm going to use this stencil that I cut out with my silhouette of these botanical fronds, what have you. Now I'm talking colors. We are going across from the blue green area just off to the left of the center of the 12 o'clock where we have the oranges and reds and yellows. Those are complementary colors, the colors that are across the wheel from each other and they give off a lot of energy. You don't want to mix them wet and wet but if you have both of them on the page it's really going to pop. So what I'm doing here is I want to create the focal image using these stencils. And I'm mixing paint wet on wet on here. So I'm just stenciling through there. And I'm taking deep violet and bright orange. And because I know that that makes a rosy golden color, and then I decide I'm going to add some yellow. So look at your stencils because you don't have to use them simply in the background. Some are background stencils, but some you can turn into the focal image or part of the focal image like I'm doing with this page. I'm loving the warm colors that are coming off on this page. And talking about inspiration, I look outside my window and there are, the red maples are in full autumn glory. And these are the colors that I'm seeing there. So, you know, look around you and get inspired. Each one of these fronds is different and since I'm taking the time to take out the stencils and doing this, I'm going to do several pages. 
I'm stenciling these on to simple copy paper and actually it's recycled copy paper. There's print on the other side, but you're not going to see it. So reuse those papers. Now I cut out those fronds in two different sizes. I never know if I'm going to be using my 9 by 12 art journal page, 8 by 10 or what have you. So I like when I'm cutting my own stencils to have that variety. I know I'm going to have more than enough of these, but this is going to give me options. I have different color combinations and then I can play with it on my composition to get the one that works best. What I don't use for this project will go into my focal image bin. Oh, I absolutely love, love, love these. Now I'm going to use another technique with stencils and I'm going to stamp with the script stamp through the stencil. This is adding a fine detail to my fronds that just really perks it up. You want a stencil that has larger areas like this one and you want a, a stamp that is smaller scale to get the best effect, I think anyways. Now this one, they're a little small, but I decide to stamp through it and I like the details. So off camera, I stamp on all the fronds. And I did make sure that the paint was dry. So now I'm going to cut out these fronds. Now I'm going to kind of bubble cut and I am not going to be precise. Let the perfectionism go. I'm giving a little bit of a white border and I'm just cutting and I don't care if I'm getting closer, if I have more white or less white, that's just all going to add to your finished page. It took me a long time to get to the point to let go of that perfectionism. So I'll just be cutting this all out and no, I'm not going to make you watch me cut out all the fronds, but I do cut out all of them. And as I said, what I don't use in this project will go into my stash. So now that I have a few things cut out, I'm just playing with the composition. I'm loving how those bright orange, yellow, reds are popping against my teal blue background. I'm just cutting off some of the printable that I don't want. There's my sentiment. Just kind of getting an eye of where everything is going to go for, before I make my final decisions. But I decide I want to add a little bit more interest to the background. So I grab the Prussian blue on the makeup sponge. This is another stencil that I cut with my silhouette. And I like I love swirls and I just wanted to add like air movement in the sky and just another detail to my background. Even though a lot of it isn't showing because there's a pretty big focal point going on it between the printable and my stenciled focal, I did want more interest into my background. I'm just turning the stencil, making that swirl, going off the page with some of them. Some of them are going to be a darker blue because I'm using more paint. I'm not too worried and I'm going to put it all over the page even though I'm going to glue some things down. As always there are close-ups at the end. If you like my channel and want to see more videos like this give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with your creative friends. That helps me grow my channel. So there I now have that and I decide I want to add a little bit more yellow to the background so I grab this Star Showers uh, stencil from the Crafters Workshop 
and I'm doing it in Naples yellow. I tried it with gold, but gold is very translucent and it wasn't really showing up. So I wanted this to resemble a night sky and it kind of knocked back those swirls a little bit, which I really liked. Remember that ugly where we started with this page? You can't even see it. So now that the background is dry, I'm going to finalize the placement of all my focal image elements. And I love how these fronds turned into trees. And of course that goes with the Halloween theme. So now I want to take my sentiment and make it fit the placement that it is. So I'm just cutting it apart, separating it and playing with it. It doesn't have to be exactly how you get it. You can always, even if it's a stamped image, you can cut it apart and rearrange it however you want it. And I'm putting some at the top and then some at the side. So your eyes actually, they start at the top and then your eyes are going to go all the way down. I like how the little ghost on the roof is just kind of hanging out in the tree there a little bit too. So once I have everything in position, I want to be sure that the sentiment doesn't get covered by the fronds, that I have enough room. So I'm going to glue those down first. Creative tip for you. I'm using my fluid matte medium. And I don't know if I had some of that Prussian blue on the brush or if something wasn't dry, but I got Prussian blue all over everything right there. Oh well. Don't cry over paint, messed up paint. You can always take a picture of where you have things as well. You can see that interesting script that I stamped through the stencil. It added such a nice detail to these fronds. So I'm just going to glue this end down so it stays in place. And then I'm going to flip it up. And then I'm going to glue this one down. I liked where I finally positioned them, so I just want to keep them there. And I'm putting matte medium underneath and on top. So once that one that's underneath is glued down, then I can flip this guy back up and glue him down as well. And you can see how those yellow, orange, red fronds really pop off that teal blue background. there's my house and now at this point I wasn't sure how I was going to handle the house if I was going to paint him or what color I was going to paint him so sometimes just put off the decision till you get there I am loving how this is coming out so I could use one of the crazy birds and put him there to be saying the sentiment. I would paint him yellow or orange, but I have this napkin, Halloween gnome from Ninny's Napkins. So I, I already had him in my stash and I had cut him out and glued him onto copy paper. Actually, I glued him onto copy paper and then cut him out and he was in my stash. So I figured I'm gonna use him. The colors on the pumpkin on him are perfect. Now I grab my angle brush and I've got black acrylic paint and I am edging the paper by shading all the way around. This just frames your project. And it's pretty much always part of my finishing. I'm adding a little bit of dark at the bottom just to 
ground everything. Everything seemed, it was like floating a little bit. And now I'm going to shade on the fronds. Just add some of that black shading on there. And as always, the shading always makes everything come to life. So I go on one side and then I add others and then I can add more shading as I see fit. And then I'm shading around the gnome and the jack-o'-lantern as well. Then I'm shading on the house. Now the house was very stark white and I decided that I'm just going to do a little shading and that's letting it gray up a little bit and emphasizing the, the rooftop and the lines. It didn't need much, but I think this really improved how it looked. What do you think? Grab my black Posca pan. I'm outlining my sentiment. Just adding a few, making it a few bit darker with the gnome, the jack-o'-lantern. And I'm gonna continue doing some doodling. I'm gonna doodle around the fronds, kind of sketchy, and around the house as well. And again, I am not being precise. I am not trying to be overly careful. Sometimes it's going on to the background, sometimes it's complete on the front, sometimes it's half there. And here I'm just emphasizing adding more black in some of the around the windows just to make everything stand out a little bit more. And there we have it, our finished page. Oh, got a splatter with gold. I just bought a new fan brush. I been, Mine broke and I've been trying to splatter without it. I am so happy I have a new fan brush. The best way I know to splatter. And there we have it. Happy Halloween, everybody.